Hey, Mike here. Uh, back in the shop here after a winter-long hiatus. Uh, tore down the uh, abulator machine and the little Coke can compressor machine that I was working with this uh, little DC compressor. Didn't really get too far with that. Um, uh, but anyway, I needed the parts, I needed the space, so, uh, you know, a lot of good stuff in there, a lot of money in there. So, uh, decided here yesterday that I'm going to get out in the shop, clean everything up, and I'm going to build something. So I did. It is a two-phase thermosiphon. Um, it's uh, more or less one continuous loop of quarter-inch copper tubing with some quarter-inch brass fittings in there. Uh, the purpose of this thing is to passively uh, transfer heat from the bottom, which is the evaporator, to the top, which is the condenser, and then back again. Uh, the refrigerant in this thing is uh, propane, liquid propane. Uh, the size of the charge is probably just a few ounces, although I didn't measure it. I just kind of squirted some in until I got some response. Um, just kind of messing around, you know, about two hours of work there to, to get some results out of it. And I'm, I'm pretty pleased with it. I mean, it demonstrates the principle it works. So I'll just explain a little bit what it does before I uh, heat it up a little bit. Um, so here we have a quarter inch... Uh, coil, very simple coil um, that will contain, or actually currently does contain, some liquid propane that lays in the bottom here. Um, we have a tube that travels up, it's insulated, and then peaks up over the top. And then we have a condenser that's also quarter inch tubing, just a little bit fewer loops there. Just, um, and then returns back down. There's a little trap at the bottom and then back into the evaporator loop. Very, very, very simple, entirely passive. Um, we do have two thermocouples installed directly in line. This is recovered from my other machines. Um, this one, you know, should should be picking up the, uh, the, the vapor and liquid coming from the evaporator, and this one here should be measuring the pure liquid returning from the condenser. Um, I do have a little valve here. That's just for purpose of filling. Um, I built this thing yesterday and then just set it off to the side and tested it here this morning and lo and behold it still has some propane in it. So any leaks that it might have are probably pretty minor. So that, that's a good thing. Um, so right now we're looking at the first coming from the evaporator is the first value there and that's the second value. They kind of dance together a bit. Um, even now that I, I did heat it up this morning and it's just kind of slowly coming back to equilibrium. Uh, the upper value is, is still a little bit warmer. Whether or not that's accurate, I don't know. Um, but uh, <clears throat> what I found was that heating up with this heat gun here, giving it a little bit of warmth there. So quickly it responds. You see they uh, more or less kind of go in, in tandem there. There's definitely some migration around the system. Um, but they were within yesterday, within about 20 or 30 seconds, uh, the top coil was too hot to touch. That was quite a bit warmer yesterday afternoon. It's morning right now. It's probably in the 60s. So it's going to take a little bit longer to warm up the cold copper. But you can see they do, uh, they do definitely go as a pair upward. So in this case, the uh, second value, the returning liquid, is actually still a bit warmer and the vapor and liquid slugs that are traveling up from the evaporator. Uh, I don't know exactly how to explain that, but uh, thermocouples might just be responding differently. But yeah, you can see that the, uh, there's definitely migration around there. There's no way that that copper itself um, on the condenser returning leg would get that warm with just this short application of, of heat. It's definitely the the liquid vapor that are going to work. I, I'm leaning towards most of the vapor, but I don't know how much liquid slugging is actually passing around the system. So there we're up over 120, and uh, it's, you know, you can touch it, but it's very, very warm. So the system does work. Um, as I understand it, what I believe is probably happening is the, uh, the propane sitting here at equilibrium exists in a saturated state. Um, and whenever you apply heat to it, it begins to vaporize and the pressure increases. Uh, that vapor is going to tend to travel up towards the top and condense and return back down, similar to a heat pipe, but there's no capillary action uh, going on in this case. Um, 
the one thing that is intended to occur is some certain amount of liquid to remain on this side and into the trap. Um, and uh, <clears throat> uh, the difference in density should allow some of that uh, falling liquid to, you know, maintain a, a circulation in one particular direction. The trap itself should help to uh, prevent vapor from backing up and going the opposite direction. We want a, a good fast circulation. In this case, in the counter counterclockwise uh, orientation, um, with excessive amounts of propane liquid in there, um, I might find that there's slugging up through the top. I chose quarter inch because I actually do want to get some some circulation going on there. Maybe a little bit of liquid going up over the top, um, and maybe a lot of liquid. Um, but the primary mode of a heat transfer is intended to be still vapor. Um, it's just that the vapor kind of drives it, sort of like a bubble pump. So anyway. Um, that's kind of nifty. Um, I'd like to do some more experiments with it and uh, maybe encase these coils in some uh, plastic containers and uh, uh, do a salted ice mixture up here and uh, see if I can actually uh, uh, do, a, do much uh, cooling work on the lower coil there. Uh, because it is propane, it should operate at relatively lower temperatures. Um, with the testing I'm doing now with you know the application of fairly intense heat, um, there's no reason why I couldn't have used water in this thing. Maybe distilled water. Um, and I might play with that here sometime. You probably get a lot more heat transfer considering that the water has like, I don't know, five times the late heat carrying capacity of propane. So, nifty stuff. Um, got another little project. I'm going to set this thing aside today and work on that. Um, but uh, I'm definitely going to be returning to this. It's pretty neat uh, considering that I slapped it together and it, it pretty much worked the first time. Threw a little squirt of propane in initially, didn't get much out, threw another squirt in, that's where it is right now. So, thanks for watching.